So communication is probably one of the most important components of a healthy relationship. And if we can't communicate, what ends up happening is we have a really difficult time bridging the gap between what our internal world is like and what we need based on our own individual needs, our own individual fears, love languages, sets of programming, beliefs, and the that gap between what somebody else's internal reality is all about and what differences of needs that they have, what different programming and fears and belief patterns they are carrying at a subconscious level. And so one of the most important things is when we're talking about attachment styles, we want to be able to bridge the gap between somebody who's fearful avoidant, for example, versus somebody who's anxious preoccupied. So in this video, we are going to cover three tips for communicating with a fearful avoidant so that you can help share your internal world with that person in the way that they will best understand and receive that. And in, and in doing that, you are going to be able to feel more seen, understood, and known by your loved one. So tip number one is when you are communicating with a fearful avoidant, if it's about, um, you know, a, a pain point or a challenge that you're having, especially if it's something that they could take personally, the, one of the best remedies to this is to be able to add extra transparency. Fearful avoidance do very well at listening, at validating your feelings, at caring and understanding about your experience when you are able to share your why. So when you're able to say, Hey, I need X, Y, Z, like I need us to stay in this weekend and not go out to the, the event that we were going to go to. A fearful avoidant has a really difficult time just saying, okay, no problem, because they want to know the why behind everything, because they are seeking transparency as a subconscious form for safety. A lot of fearful avoidants grew up in really chaotic environments, and they're happy to empathize and, um, you know, make compromises with people that they love and care about, but they have a hard time doing it if they don't get why they're supposed to be doing it. And so I think a lot of partners or loved ones of fearful avoidance think like, why is my fearful avoidant always questioning me? Why don't they just listen to what I say or see where I'm coming from? But it's because at a deep subconscious level, understanding the why helps them feel a sense of certainty and safety. So whenever you're asking for a need, or if it's a big change in plans or a big request that you have, adding that transparency is very valuable. Number two, Two, fearful avoidance respond very well to vulnerability. If you have a criticism of a, a partner and like, you know, when we look at the idea of criticism, every criticism is just about an unmet need, right? We, we criticize when we haven't communicated a need in the positive first. So we say, you never do the dishes when we need to actually be saying, hey, I would really love you to take a turn and do the dishes. You can sort of hear the difference in how likely they are to motivate somebody's behavior, right? But anyways, um, when you have a, a criticism, right? Um, what you want to try to do there is exactly what we just talked about. Flip it into the positive, right? Flip it into, it doesn't mean that you have to be positive in your emotions about the event. You're allowed to be upset that the dishes weren't done, but rather than saying, Hey, you never do this. You never do that. Flip it into the positive. So you're able to say, um, Hey, you know, I would really like help with this. I would really like support with that. And I noticed that I asked about this before and I noticed that it didn't happen and it's really important to me. And can you please work on that in the future? Right. And even just sharing vulnerably in that positive mode goes a very long way. Um, and what happens too, is somebody's less likely to feel defensive, attacked, critical, angry, you know, they're just so much less likely to take it personally as a whole. So I have some exciting news, which is that we are doing a thousand dollars off of our lifetime membership sale to the personal development school, which means you get access to literally everything at PDS for your entire rest of your life. Essentially that entails all of our different courses. You have lifetime access to, I do four live webinars a week, every single week, you can access them ongoing and you get access to all of our daily community events. So I'd love to see you on the other side and you can access it by using the link in the description box below. And number three, a really valuable thing you can do when you are communicating with a fearful avoidant is you can talk about, um, you know, sort of acknowledging when they do do something that they follow through with so that they know that these things are important to you. Fearful avoidance, they tend to be quite, um, 
like they tend to really, because of their hypervigilance, they tend to really read into and pick up on things quite quickly about other people. They tend to be quite insightful into other people's behaviors, but fearful avoidance also can misread things at times. And they can sort of make assumptions at a subconscious level about different things. So the more that you are sharing and the more that you are doing that work, and even if you um, sort of add to that to a certain degree, the more you're sharing things vulnerably with a fearful avoidant, the more they tend to be able to empathize more effectively with you. Um, again, like we were talking about earlier, especially if it's around something that's potentially critical. So that's sort of like a bonus tip, but the more you're doing that, the more that you are going to feel seen and heard and known. And somebody has emotional presence and availability to listen to you when they don't take things personally, and they're not feeling like they're attacked in some way. Um, and unfortunately, the more trauma we have, um, the more likely we are to take things personally. So it's obviously something for the fearful avoidant to work on themselves. And I wouldn't say fearful avoidant take things way, way, way more personally than other attachment cells, but it can be, there definitely can be some sensitivities and pain points around things, but those are some tips to help bypass um, some of those sensitivities so that you can feel seen and heard and known. And if you want to take a step deeper into some of this, then you can always do a deep dive into our fearful avoidant reprogramming course. If you are an FA listening to this or our communication course, that has a lot of of these steps um, really flesh out in a lot more detail than I can just put into like a quick video here. Um, and you can check both of those out using the link in the description box below to check them out for free for seven days. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in future videos.